refrain of these weeks is the haunting expression, Eicha Yoshva Badad. How is it possible that this nation, this people, came to be alone, to dwell by themselves? A terrifying thing it is to be alone. It's the bane of our existence and it's the fear of our generation. With the plethora of ways we have to invest in friendships, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and onward, the greatest dread, the greatest fear of any youth growing up today is that I won't have enough friends, that I won't have enough connections, that I won't be constantly connected. And yet, the more we're connected, we're finding, the less we feel connected, the more lonely people feel. It's the irony when we invest in the wrong sort of connection. We have the wrong sort of solitude. Being badad is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, one of the brachos we read in Parsha's Balak is, of course, Hein Am Levadad Yishkon. Bilam says about us that we are a lonely nation. We're a nation all by ourselves with God, of course. And that's a positive thing. That we have a Kaddish Baruch Hu, that He has us. That we don't need anyone else. That's a sense of independence. Sometimes being alone is not a bad thing. Sometimes it doesn't connote a sad and depressing loneliness, but rather an ontological loneliness, as Roselovitchik said. A sense that we exist independent. Sometimes you see a child talks about how they did something all by themselves, and that's a glorious and wonderful achievement. I did it by myself, Mom. I did it by myself, Abba. And then later on in life, when you feel someone doesn't have a friend, loneliness is a terrible plight. He's all by himself. She's all alone. Nothing could be more devastating than that sensation of being alone. And so how do we tap into a good sort of loneliness solitude, a holy, exalted loneliness, the ontological loneliness that Rosolovitchik wrote about versus the terrible type of loneliness of Echa Yashva Badad. And I think the answer is very simple. The answer is that this period of time that we're in now, the three weeks, began with a mission in Meraglim, the spies who went out to see the land. And the Kutzka Rebbe Zal has an incredible insight He says that the Meraglim went to see what was going on in Israel. And they observed people who looked like giants and who thought about us as tiny grasshoppers. And they even remarked that we are grasshoppers in their eyes. They're so large, they're so frightening that when they look at us, they see grasshoppers. But the Kotzker notes that the only way they knew this is because that was their own self-perception. The Jewish people said, we were grasshoppers in our eyes, be'enenu, and so too we were grasshoppers in their eyes, that if you see yourself as a lonely and lowly grasshopper, then ultimately that's how everyone else is going to seem to perceive you. In other words, my own self-perception, my own sense of self, my own confidence dictates how I perceive the world looking at me generation is consumed with understanding how other people perceive us. That's not going to pers- that's not going to uh, end in any genuine friendship. That's going to end in loneliness. If all I care about is how many friends I have, because that's about my public persona, that's about how people perceive me, then the more friends I get, the lonelier I'm going to feel because those friendships are not real friendships. They're dependent upon they're, they're rather metrics on how I see myself is based on how I perceive other people looking at me. But if my sense of self is not based on what I think other people are saying about me, but what I feel about myself, then I could be alone and I could be in a room with thousands of people and I'm going to feel great about myself. And so may we achieve a holy loneliness, an am levadad yishkon, to be alone with God and not to be alone and in solitude from the other nations, which is a relationship predicated not on my own sense of self, but rather on what other people say about me.